Hello friends, this video on solid states part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's take some numericals now. The first question is what kind of defect can arise when a solid is heated? What, which physical property is affected by it and in what way? See, when you heat a, a what do you call solid, what will happen if I have a solid and if I heat it? Yeah, so if I have a solid which has some molecules here, if I heat it, what will happen? Some of the molecules will go off, or some of the atoms or ions will go off, the constant particles, right? So what will happen on heating? These ions, or I'll write constituent particles. My constituent particles will get energy, will get excited, and they will leave the lattice. See, if they leave the lattice, what will happen? Vacancy will be created. Correct? So, vacancy is created now. So, what is this? If a vacancy is created, we are talking about vacancy defect. That is correct. So, what kind of defect it creates? By answer it, it creates vacancy defect. Right. The next question is which physical property is affected? Obviously, in case of vacancy defect, in, if these molecules are not there, the, the vacancy here, the density will decrease. Correct? So, the density will decrease in this case. So, the physical property that is impacted is density. And what will happen? It will decrease. Correct? The next question is what is the stoichiometric defect shown by ZNS? We have seen that ZNS shows flying. Hill defects that we have seen and AGBR I told you this is the exception it shows both Frankel and Scott Kelly since I have explained these things I'm not uh, spending much time on this if you want you can go to the previous slides where we explain uh, why it is showing uh, these kind of defects the next question is Explain how vacancies are introduced in the ionic so solids when cations of higher valencies is added as impurity to it. So we have first ionic solid. For example, can be NaCl. Good example. Now cations of higher valencies is added as impurity. For example, Sr plus two. Is that it? So we know that one Sr plus two molecule is equivalent to two Na plus molecule. Correct. So one SR2 will kick out two Na plus molecules, but since it can occupy only one space, one space will be vacant. So that is how it This is my NaCl. Two of my Na plus uh, went out, but only one is occupied by this is my SR2 plus. Only one of the places occupied, the other places vacant. Correct. So SR2 plus will replace two Na plus. It will take the position of one n plus and one n plus will be one n plus uh, lattice will be vacant. The next question is ionic solids which have an ionic vacancies due to metal excess defect develop color. Explain with the help of suitable example. So we know now we know that this anionic vacancies uh, in the metal excess defect has F centered. Correct. So let's take the example of NaCl itself. This is the case where we have what happens is we have NaCl right you heat uh, you this you uh, you, have, you pass this Na vapors here lot of Na vapors here in this surface so what happens is the Cl minus comes out of the system Cl minus comes out of the system it reacts with this Na and it forms NaCl and when electron comes out right because Na becomes Na plus it gives electron because Na is more stable than Na plus and then the Cl minus comes out and this space of the Cl minus is occupied by this electron right so we have electron here and it's called F center now why it developed special color is now since this is electron here correct electron can easily absorb light that is the visible uh, radiation and can easily get excited correct now if this uh, electron gets excited it goes to the higher energy level but when it comes down to back to its uh, energy level it emits some light and that is giving a special color for example in, in case of NaCl crystal NaCl crystal when you heat this 
in sodium vapor as I explained, my Cl- comes out and the electron takes the place of Cl- and this gives yellow color to this NaCl. The next is a group 14 element is to be converted to N type semiconductor by doping it give with the suitable impurity to which group it should belong. So let's see this is my group 14. Now I have to make it N type. N type means negative charge. That means something which has more electrons. So I have to dope with something which has more electrons. So this silicon has four valence electron. This phosphorus has five. Boron has three. So obviously I'll dope it with this group to make it N type. Correct? So this will give me N type. If you want to make it P type, I'll use. We explain this. So group 13, this is my group 13, this is my group 15. So the answer is, if you want, if, you, if my group 14 is the base element, if I want to dope it to make N type, you have to use group 15 elements. If you want to make it P type, you have to use group 13 elements. What type of substance would make better permanent magnets, ferrimagnetic or ferromagnetic? So we have seen that ferromagnetic is something which can be permanently magnetized. Correct? So why? Because the ordering of domain is persistent even after a moving field. And thus you can say that ferromagnetic is a better substance to make a permanent magnet. Why? Because the ordering of domain is maintained even after removing the electric or magnetic field. You see, this is my ferromagnetic substance and this is my ferrimagnetic substance after applying electric field. So this is a better option. Stability of a crystal is reflected in the magnitude of its melting point. Comment. See, it say, the question says that stability is something which we can derive from the melting point. Obviously, see, melting point is a good indication of the intramolecular force of attraction, correct? So if you have a high melting point, this implies what? This implies high intramolecular, intramolecular force of attraction, correct? So high intramolecular force of attraction means high melting point. So if high intermolecular force of attraction that, that easily implies greater stability. So intermolecular force of attraction is a sandwich here, is the key here. So melting point, high melting point means high intermolecular force of attraction and high intermolecular force of attraction also means high stability. So high melting point means high stability. Correct. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.